going on everybody it is sunday may 27th and i'm gonna do a quick walkthrough of uh the sunday slate doing a solo show i'm still decked out in some liverpool gear uh didn't go our way yesterday but uh i can't be too upset um just not not the day for us so nine games on fanduel today 11 on dk because why would they want to make things easy uh, more weird stuff from the Rays, so I'm just going to go through like I normally do with Jake, but uh, you don't get Jake's opinions, you get mine. So first game up, Angels and Yankees. Uh, Angels 3.9 run implied total, Yankees 4.6. It's a 57% chance to win for the Yanks. Uh, Garrett Richards going for the Angels, Masahiro Tanaka uh, going for the Yankees. Uh, Tanaka's a guy that I'll have quite a bit of on DraftKings in particular, uh, $6,700 price point is, is ludicrous. Um, I'll end up with, and even, you know, 20 plus percent of Tanaka, I would imagine. Uh, he should be relatively popular unless I'm crazy. Um, 3.9 run implied total for the Angels is nothing to really be worried about. I can't get enough of him tonight. I don't have any Garrett Richards. Uh, Yankees aren't really a spot where I want to run Garrett Richards out there. So, I don't have as much Tanaka on FanDuel as I do on DK. The price point's not quite as good. Um, but on DK, you cannot go wrong having uh, Tanaka as your second starter. One of the better options on the board. I mean, for like... Who would ever play Shasin over Tanaka with Tanaka being $300 cheaper? I, I just can't get to that. Um, so yeah, you, uh, in my opinion, you want a, a bunch of Tanaka. I'm not really looking at the bats all that much in this game. Although I think a Yankees stack could make some sense. It's just not, uh, it's not the best stack in the world for me on DK. You don't need their implied runs as much because the two late games have monster totals. So they'll, the Yankees will probably be super low or not super low owned, but like relatively low owned on DraftKings. Uh, on FanDuel, I have a feeling I'll get to him a little bit once I uh, shave some of my ownership off of the top couple teams. So what I normally do, I run my crunches to a certain exposure and then, uh, you know, that just sits until I take a look at ownership data. And then, uh, then I'll adjust, you know, my top couple exposed teams based on the ownership data. That way I don't have more of someone than I need. Like if someone's projected for 4% ownership and I've already got 25, I could bring that guy down to like 17, still be or even lower than that, still be way above the field on that person, but then also pick up extra lines to differentiate. So once I do that, I expect to see a little bit more Yankees on the fan duel side. Uh, I don't expect them to pop up all that much on the DK side. I don't really love their pricing. And for the Angels, uh, outside of like a Trout one-off, um, not a team I'm looking at. Uh, Braves and Red Sox. Braves 2.9 run implied total. Red Sox 4.7. It's a 69% <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, chance to win for the Red Sox. See, normally I need Jake here to, to give me the nice when I read that. Uh, Fulte's going for the Braves. Chris Sale going for the Red Sox. Uh, you can't look at faulty on a day like today. Red Sox just mash um, right-handed pitching. 2.9 run implied total for the Braves. Not giving them the best chance to win. Red Sox still at 4-7. Uh, you know, it's a Chris Sale day, and it should be. Only 11-8 on DK. Um, you know, besides the fact that the Braves don't strike out all that much, uh, Chris Sale should be in a position to cruise here. Uh, I love my Braves and all, but, you know, Chris Sale's good. Um, I'll likely have as much sale as I can get. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say I'd be right around the field, somewhere in the mid-20s for ownership. Uh, if it goes, if sale's way higher than that, um, I won't follow him up there. I'll happily transition to, I don't know, J. A. Happ or Pavetta. Or, you know, even more Tanaka or something along those lines. But I love Sale tonight. 
on DK, I would, I would rather have Sale over Strasburg with the price difference, although the Nats definitely look good. Um, not a lot of fear when you go against the Marlins. Um, on FanDuel, Sale is the most expensive pitcher. I would rather have Strasburg in that case, but I like them both, and I'll have them both in, in abundance. Not looking at any Braves bats, obviously, with that uh, 2.9 run implied total. Uh, Red Sox bats, um, they'll probably gain some tr a little bit more traction for me uh, as I get closer to lock. Let's see where we're at right now. I've got they're my seventh stack on FanDuel and my sixth stack on DK. So that'll go up a slight bit, I would imagine, around noon. But um, I don't expect to see them push into the top three. Uh, not with some of these games that are on the slate later on. So, little bits of the Red Sox are fine. I'm not looking at the Braves at all. Uh, and I'm happy to have a ton of sale. Astros and Indians. Astros, 3.9 run implied total. Indians, 3.7. Uh, crazy pitching game here. 53% chance to win for the Astros. Itchy nose. Uh, Garrett Cole going for Houston. Trevor Bauer going for Cleveland. Um, because these guys are both facing each other, I, like I don't, I don't really love either guy. Uh, I would have assumed I'd like Bauer a little bit more at that price point on FanDuel, but not really grading out all that well. Um, these are two guys that I'll want to see their projected ownership for. Uh, if either of them are relatively high. Uh, that'll be a safe fade for me. If somebody's shockingly low, I'll probably force in a little bit of one of these guys because I can see a scenario where things go well. God, my nose is so itchy. I don't know what it is. It's weird. It's not important. Um, I would lean more towards Cole on DraftKings where the prices are closer. I would lean a little bit closer to Bauer actually on FanDuel. Um, as a sort of maybe a, like a more contrarian play. Their ownership is going to be the thing that I want to pay attention to most. Like if it comes out that Bauer is going to project it to be like 3% or something on FanDuel, I'll want to have a little bit of that because of the upside in his arm. Um, this one's the one I won't understand the most. And then for hitting, I, I don't want either side of it. Both teams under four from an implied total. Uh, I got no ownership here outside of what looks like one Lindor one-off. Uh, that'll be the extent of it for me. Messages. That's just a reminder to do exactly what I'm doing. Yep, there it is. Nats and Marlins. Nats, 4.5 run implied total. Marlins, 3.3. 63% chance to win for the Nats. Uh, Steven Strasburg going for Washington. Elysia Hernandez going for Miami. Uh, not looking at Hernandez here. It's obviously Strasburg. Uh, I'll have somewhere in the mid-20s for ownership for Strasburg. And uh, like I mentioned on the sale spot, um, I prefer Strasburg on FanDuel and Sale on DK. Uh, I would guess that would follow um, ownership projections as well. Now we're finally getting into some bats. Uh, Nats with that 4.5 run implied total in this matchup against Hernandez. Uh, big time fan of Nationals bats. The Nats are my number one stack on FanDuel, number four on DK, and that's just because FanDuel doesn't get the benefit of the Rangers, Reds, and Rockies later. But yeah, Nats are my number one stack on FanDuel for sure. Um, Bryce Harper obviously looking great here. 4,300 for Harper against a righty. Sign me up. Um, I know I didn't talk about this before, now I need to. So we do need to worry about whether in the Braves and Red Sox game, it looks like it's going to drizzle like most of it. Uh, I would say that delays are very possible. Um, that could push Chris Sale's ownership down a little bit. Uh, you know, if they get like some sort of one hour rain delay in the middle of the third, he might not come back out. So none of these games look like they're particularly likely to be postponed. Uh, you can make a case, I guess, for the Blue Jays and Phillies. But 
it's going to have uh, it's going to make pitching options interesting. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to weather all the way up closer to lock. If you guys have any questions, feel free to tweet at me. I'll be around all day. Um, it's hard to talk about it too much right now, so you may want to be muted with your Chris Sale exposure and uh, and your Tanaka exposure. Um, they're looking at rain all through game time, so something to keep in mind. But if we're looking at bats. Uh, I have all, regardless of weather in any scenario, you know, bats are usually fine unless there's postponed risk, but nothing to worry about in this Nats game. You know, they'll be in the dome. So I'll max out on Turner, Harper, Rendon, Juan Soto, uh, Matt Adams looks great. Um, you know, I'll get some Michael Taylor. Uh, I just want a ton of these guys. Um, like I said, they're my number one stack on FanDuel. I'd expect them to stay in that top two uh, without question all the way up through lock uh, couldn't like them anymore particularly harper who looks as good as someone can look on a day like today and then no marlins obviously orioles and rays orioles four run implied total rays four run implied total it's a 50 50 game kevin gaussman going for baltimore now, as of right now, it's again supposed to be Sergio Romo. I wish we would have talked about this on Friday, but we didn't. So that's that's more my fault than anything else. But uh, Yarborough went uh, for the Rays after Romo. And honestly, he should have been owned in like the 10 to 15% range um, for that matchup. Him not starting was kind of irrelevant. So I expect Austin Pruitt to be the guy that gets some time after Romo comes out. Uh, it's actually Faria's spot in the lineup, so I don't know if they would go to Faria after Romo. I doubt it. So right now I'm looking at Pruitt, but if we see more to find out who's going to be in after Romo, you definitely want to take a look there. Um, I'm looking at Pruitt right now, and I'll probably have a couple lines of Pruitt on DK as my starting pitcher too. Wouldn't expect him to have any ownership. And at 4,100, I'm willing to take that shot. Um, he could come in and throw five to six innings just right after Romo. So moving forward, if the Rays keep doing this, you want to pay attention to who they're bringing in as their uh, second guy because that person is usually going to get the time. Yarborough was great. He had like eight or nine Ks, I think. Uh, just one walk, you know, picked really well. So don't want to miss out on that kind of stuff. Um... So if that's the case, I'll have uh, a little bit of Kevin Gaussman and Pruitt as SP2 options, uh, hitter-wise. Not looking at much other than maybe Brad Miller as a one-off on Fan or yeah on Fanduel. Uh, but you know, four-run implied total on both sides. Not the sexiest game in the world. So just just Gaussman and Pruitt in little amounts. Neither one of those guys on Fanduel. White Sox and Tigers. White Sox 4.7 run implied total. Tigers 4.8. It's a 51% chance to win for the Tigers. James Shields going for Chicago. Blaine Hardy going for the Tigers. Um, I'm getting a lot of Hardy even when I mute his innings. I don't expect him to go deep in the game, but uh, I don't know why he's popping up as much as he is, but it's something that I'm going to need to look into because I got quite a bit of Hardy on DK on my first pass. I think he's probably getting a little overrated in his uh, relief pitcher to starting pitcher translations from Steamer. Because this isn't quite the game that I would expect, especially with that implied total. So I'm kind of liking Hardy as an SP2 option that I don't expect people to be on. I'll be more interested to see his projected ownership. If it ends up being like 1% or 2%, I'll bring that 16 down to 4% or something. Um, I'll realize how wrong I am. <laughs> but for right now, he grades out really well. Uh, a lot of that has to do with just the 43% price or $4,300 price tag. Um, keep a shit. I won't have any James Shields, even though he keeps continuing to prove me wrong. I will once again be stacking against him. So White Sox and Tigers bats. Uh, Tigers are my number three stack on FanDuel, White Sox number five. Um, they're both a little bit further down on DK again because of the, the three o'clock games. So for the, we'll talk about the White Sox first. Tim Anderson getting the most for me, 
three thousand dollar shortstop on FanDuel, batting leadoff, you know, uh, four point seven run implied total. I like that quite a bit. Um, Jose Abreu looking exceptional in this spot, righty lefty matchup, big time power, thirty eight hundred for a first baseman, and then Matt Davidson, sort of the same scenario as Abreu, but for third base. So, I like a White Sox stack. Uh, a decent amount on FanDuel, but I prefer the Tiger stack uh, big time. So, Leonis Martin, Castellanos, Candelario, VMart, uh, they're all going to get a ton of ownership from me. Um, to get VMart here, you know, only at 2200 well worth a flyer there. Um, you know, Iglesias will be a part of it a little bit for me on FanDuel just to fill out that shortstop spot. Uh, but yeah, I expect the Tigers to be somewhere in that three, four, five range for uh, exposure for me. And I won't get to these guys too much on DK. That's, I don't know why I went with Indians. Next one up should be Blue Jays. Blue Jays and Phillies. Uh, Blue Jays 3.8 run implied total. Phillies 3.9. It's a 52% chance to win for the Phillies. Uh, J.A. Happ going for Toronto. Nick Pavetta going for Philly. I like both of these guys. Um, I'll have a decent amount of Hap and Pavetta on DK. Similar scenario on FanDuel, although I'll have a little bit more Pavetta. A price point of 8000 on FanDuel is really nice. Uh, I think he's probably the best mid-tier guy on the board. Um, I don't... But yeah, I don't mind having either one of Hap or Pavetta on DK, and I'll have quite a bit of them. Uh... I'm anxious to see. This is another group of two pitchers against each other where I'm anxious to see their ownership. Um, if either one of them is crazy low owned or oddly highly owned, uh, I'll probably make a pivot to like the alternative guy because I like them both. Uh, from a hitting perspective, not getting either of them on DraftKings, but I do get a little bit of a little bit more Blue Jays than Phillies on FanDuel. Uh, Blue Jays are my sixth most owned stack as of right now just a lot of upside in their bats Granderson uh, Justin Smoke um, you know Josh Donaldson has a really nice price point Blue Jays are just priced pretty low right now I don't really like the implied total they're not a team that I would want to have a ton of but they're a team that makes a lot of things work from a price perspective just because they've got outside of Josh Donaldson they're all relatively low ticket guys so my focus is on the pitching I'll get a little bit of Blue Jays. I'll probably have a little bit of the righty bats for the Phillies. So like Cesar Hernandez, Reese Hoskins out there. Um, righty power plays really well in Philadelphia. But this game is more pitching than hitting for me. Cardinals and Pirates. Cardinals four run implied total. Pirates four run implied total. 50-50 uh, game, Miles McCollis going for St. Louis, Jamison Tyon going for Pittsburgh. Uh, for the first time in, I don't know, the whole year, I'm not getting any McCollis. Uh, he's a guy that has popped up in abundance for me uh, ever since he started this season. But today, it's not a Cardinals day for me. It's, uh, it's pitching and it's tie-on. 5,800 on DraftKings. I don't know if that's just a misprice or what, uh, but he is way too low. It's another guy where I'm going to end up with a ton of exposure to. Uh, these down-the-line guys like Tanaka and Tyon, um, super duper duper underpriced. I can't really wrap my head around it. It's another case where we got to pay attention to weather. It's going to matter a little bit more as we get closer to lock. Um, you know, potential for rain delays, which is tricky, but man, it would be hard for me to like tie on more. I've got him projected for 18 fantasy points. I mean, that's only 0.4 behind J.A. Happ, and Happ is double his salary. I have tie on projected for just as much as Garrett Cole on DraftKings. So if you're looking for any perspective there, uh, I like tie on just as much as I like his previous teammate. Um, I'm probably in the minority a little bit for that, but I cannot get enough of Tyon and Tanaka. It makes me feel like I've got a bug in my sheet. That's how much I like these guys. No hitting, once again. Uh, we're starting to get into where the hitting's going to be, though. 
like Mets and Brewers. Mets 4.4 run implied total. Brewers 4.9. It's a 55% chance to win for the Brewers. Zach Wheeler going for the Mets. Julius Chassin going for Milwaukee. Uh, this is not a pitching game. This is all hitting for me. Um, Mets are my fourth most owned stack on FanDuel. Brewers are second. Um, and then Brewers are fifth on DK right now for me. Um, so I guess we're talking more about FanDuel than anything else. Did I really not get any Hazy Aguilar on FanDuel? Yeah, no shit. Really didn't get any of them. That's fair. Uh, so we'll look at the Mets first. Uh, first five guys are the the main focus. So Nimmo, uh, Azrubal Cabrera looks great. 3,700 for a second baseman. Wilmer Flores continues to be dramatically underpriced. 2,300 on FanDuel. Uh, I'll, I'll have 20 plus percent of him probably. Uh, Jay Bruce and Conforto, both big time power bats against uh, Chassin. Even Adrian Gonzalez at 2,600 uh, is worth a flyer. Ahmed Rosario is going to probably come along for the ride to fill out a shortstop spot to be part of the Mets stack. I like the Mets quite a bit here. Uh, I like the Brewers even more. Uh, Lorenzo Cain looks exceptional. Yelich, Braun, Travis Shaw, they all look great. You know, Yelich and Shaw getting that lefty-righty matchup is perfect. Um, Jonathan VR, uh, not better. Like, he's better against lefties than he is against righties, but still 2,400. Um, the bottom part of a Brewers stack uh, will make things really easy to fit in. They're just really cheap. And then that 4.9 run implied total is a direction I want to go. So I'll have this game a lot. I'll probably have this as a game stack quite a bit too. Mets and Brewers with Strasburg or Mets and Brewers with Sale. Uh, should be pretty easy to get to something like that. Now, uh, these next two games are for DraftKings only. Uh, they're not a part of the FanDuel main slate. We're going to see a lot more uh, DK hitters here. So Royals and Rangers. Royals 4.4 run implied total. Rangers 5.6. Uh, 61% chance to win for the Rangers. Jason Hamill going for Kansas City. Cole Hamels going for Texas. Uh, Rangers are my number two stack right now on DK. Just going to own them in abundance. Um... You know, uh, not a big fan of Jason Hamill. Should be super hittable. Uh, I don't expect to have any Hamels either. So I like the entire Rangers lineup. DeShields, Chu, Falefa, Mazzara, Profar, Gallo, Odor, Chirinos. Uh, Guzman's showing up as a zero here. Uh, I'd expect it to be slightly higher than zero. It's mostly just because Gallo is priced $100 cheaper than him. So it's defaulting to Gallo, but... I'll have exposure to Guzman as well, just because he's got a little bit of power. But I, I want the whole lineup. Um, 5.6 run implied total is monstrous, so there's no one that I won't take. I'll have every combination of Rangers, and they'll definitely be in my uh, top three stacks. Final game. This will sound familiar. This one will be obviously incredibly popular. Reds and Rockies, it's a Coors game. It's got a 12-plus total right now. 5.6 runs for the Reds. The Reds. 5.6 runs for the Reds. 6.6 uh, .6 for the Rockies. It's Matt Harvey going for Cincinnati. Herman Marquez. Herman? Herman Marquez going for Colorado. Um, yeah, you're not starting either of these pitchers, and you're starting as many hitters as you can. Uh, they will be, without question, the most chalky stack of the day. Rockies, number one stack. Reds, number three. Um, the Rockies will basically hit my ownership caps across the board. Um, I'll just pay attention to their expected ownership to see how crazy something like that is. But you can see they're all maxing out at right around my 29% cap. Same sort of scenario for the Reds. It just doesn't run as deep, so I wouldn't get as much Billy Hamilton, especially if he's hitting ninth. Uh, I don't get as much Shebler either, although uh, you can make a case that he looks pretty good, but 4300 is a decent price tag. I'll have a lot of Jesse Winker. 
a lot of Votto, a lot of Tucker Barnhart, a lot of Scooter Jeanette, um, little amount or you know, functional amounts of Suarez and Peraza, but Suarez at five thousand, you know, he's he's priced like he's playing a course, so it's not as overwhelming of a great matchup. It's hard to avoid these guys though. Just monstrous run totals that you have to pay attention to. So that's my look through everything. I know I, I plowed through it. You don't get as much uh, swinging strike, hard contact stuff out of me that you do from uh, my cohort, Jake. Um, mostly because I'm just taking a look at what the projections are spitting out for me. Um, I should probably do more digging. I should probably be more like uh, the owner of Baseball Savant. So if I look at some DK crunches, um, I'm going to start with Jamison Tyon. I can easily get to Strasburg or Sale. Uh, I think that I feel a little safer right now. Um, let's see. I'm going to use Strasburg for now uh, until we see a little bit more about uh, the weather for that sale game. But I don't have too much, like, I'm a little nervous about Pittsburgh as well, but I'm less nervous when the pre when the pitcher's only 5,800. So if I did look at Tyon and Strasburg, um, I got quite a bit of options. So I can get the Rangers and the Rockies, even, like, good parts of that. DeShields, Profar, Odor, and Gallo. And then the Rocky stack with Blackman, Dahl, Arenado, and Walters. I mean, give me a break. There's so much hitting in that lineup. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. You could do Rockies and Rangers. You can do Rockies and Reds. Mets, Rockies. Nats, Rockies. Like, you could have whatever you want by using Tyon. So, by like, I'll get to the same thing instead of Tyon, you know, who's 5,800. Tanaka's only 6,700. You'll be able to do similar stuff um, going up to Tanaka. That's why I expect their ownerships to be relatively high. So DK, man, um, you just want to pay attention to the weather. Figure out where you want to take your shot because Strasburg, Sale, you know, depending on projected ownership, Cole and Bauer. Uh, J.A. Happ looks really good. Pavetta looks good. Um, Tanaka and Tyon let you do weird stuff. We didn't even get into like me liking Blaine Hardy or Austin Pruitt. Uh, so much pitching on DraftKings. Being able to get to whatever hitting you want will be there. That makes me really, really interested in what our ownership projections will look like. So if you're not a premium Osimo member, uh, you're missing out because ownership will rule the day today. And uh, if I didn't have that, I mean, it's like playing with a with blindfolds on when you don't have an expectation of what people are going to do uh it really hampers your game i switch back over the fan duel now um we'll take a little bit closer look at a fan duel crunch i think that if i'm looking at fan duel you know we'll look at strasburg for now and let you know what kind of bats you can get to even with the top pitcher so nats and brewers um, you know, I would happily take uh, Rendon, Harper, and Juan Soto. I think they look great. That's a really nice piece of the Brewers lineup, along with V-Mart as a one-off. Um, V-Mart being 2,200, he's going to be a relatively popular one-off, in my opinion. Like, if we wanted to drop down here to Nats, Brewers, uh, Rendon, Turner, Soto good pieces of the Brewers, and then Wilmer Flores, again, another catcher slash first base option on FanDuel with a bargain price. I'll be rotating through those sort of options quite a bit, but it looks like Tigers Nats and Brewers Nats are the way that I get to Strasburg the most, particularly with Strasburg being able to be a part of that stack. Um, we're going like a lot of 4-3-1s for Strasburg to get those lines in. So that's all I got. Um, I'll be putting up spotlight hitters, pitchers, and stacks uh, within the next hour or so. Um, they should be up by the time most people are watching this. Uh, I'll be around if you guys have any questions. So feel free to hit me up. You know, Follow us on Twitter. Like and subscribe to the video and this channel. Check out all the content we're putting out. 
And uh, I know we talk about it a lot, ownership projections behind the paywall. Um, that's You're missing out quite a bit. And that doesn't even say anything to the articles that Alex is writing twice a week on uh, you know some sort of advanced uh, GPP strategy, really getting into the game theory of it all. Um, golf content, hockey content, sparingly now. NBA content, sparingly now. WNBA projections. Um, we're slowly but surely growing, people. So get in on the ground floor. Best of luck. Enjoy the rest of your Memorial Day weekend. I have no idea how many people will watch this considering it's the Sunday before Memorial Day. But either way, it's out. Uh, best of luck today. Go Liverpool.